everybody. So you've learned all about basic circuit elements such as resistors, voltage sources, and current sources. So now we're going to talk about two brand new circuit elements that store energy. So these are inductors, which store energy in a magnetic field, and capacitors, which store energy in an electric field. So starting with inductors, it is literally a coil of wire. So imagine you take a wire and you start coiling it up like this. And let's say there's the other end of the wire. And let's say there's a current going this way, some current I. Now, that current, the way I drew it, is going to go around that coil counterclockwise. So if you take your right hand and coil your fingers in the direction of the current, then your thumb is pointing which way? Out of the page, right towards you. So that's the direction of the magnetic field. Now, there's going to be some, let's say we label the voltage here. That voltage is going to be related to this current going around the coil by the inductance L. Inductance L. And the units are Henry. Henry. Okay, and then typically you'll have values like milli Henry. Okay, now the voltage across here is proportional to the time derivative of the current, like this. That constant of proportionality is the inductance. Okay, so remember this forever, just memorize it. Voltage proportional to the time derivative of the current. This is different. If you look at a resistor, the voltage is proportional to the current, like this, right? Directly proportional. For an inductor, the time derivative. Okay, so now it's different. Okay, now as an example, let's say there's current as a function of time that's, um, let's say, 2 amps, like a constant 2 amps, like this. So the current is 2. And let's consider an example where the inductance is just 1 Henry, just to make our computations easier, right? So L is 1. What is V? V is 1 Henry times di dt. What's the time derivative of a constant? 0. Right, so anytime you have a constant current, the voltage is going to be zero, like this. Now imagine if the current were maybe like this. Let's say 2T. So let's say it's like 2 amps per second, like this. What's the voltage? 1 Henry times di dt. What's the time derivative of 2T? Two. So what does that look like? Two, like this. Okay, so this is just the slope of this. Or if it were like parabolic, let's say 2t squared, then what's the voltage? 1 Henry times the derivative of 2t squared, 4t. Right, so it'll look something like, maybe like this. And then now, let's say we go back to a current of um, 6 amps. So let's say maybe like this. Okay, what's the time derivative? Zero, right, because the time derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, now super important. Check this out. The voltage was here and then instantaneously changed to this right here. The voltage changed instantaneously, but the current did not. Right? The voltage is the slope. 
right? This is the slope of this. The only way the current could change instantaneously like this is if, right, the slope of this would be what? What is the slope of a vertical line? Infinity. You would need infinity voltage for the current to change instantaneously. In other words, it is impossible for the current in an inductor to change instantaneously. Okay, remember that forever. In this class, you're, we're kind of studying, analyzing circuits that like somebody else designed, but as an engineer, you're gonna be the one designing circuits. So you need to understand how your building blocks work and how they behave. So that's how inductors behave. It's like this, and it's impossible for the current to change instant instantaneously. Okay, now how much energy is stored in this inductor in that magnetic field? Let's start with power. So power is voltage times current. Okay, so voltage is L di dt times current I. So this is it, that's the power. Now how do we get energy? Power is the time derivative of energy. I'll say for energy W. Power is the time derivative, right? And then power is L di, L i di dt. Now, see, let's go like this and integrate both sides. When the current is zero, the energy is zero. When the current is some i, the energy is some w. So what do we get? Let's integrate L i di, one half i squared. So this is the energy stored in that inductor. Okay, so imagine as a mnemonic device, imagine there's a wheel that's rotating with some angular velocity omega, and the wheel has a moment of inertia i. What's the rotational kinetic energy? One half i omega squared. Right, this is the rotational kinetic energy of a wheel that's rotating. This is the energy stored in the magnetic field of an inductor. Kind of see how, like just to help remember, right? It's like a wheel that's rotating. This is like current that's going around in a, in a circle. So guess just a way to remember the story. Okay, let's switch over to capacitors. So a capacitor, functionally, for our description, you can just think of it as two parallel plates, two conductive parallel plates. Okay, and then let's say there's a wire over on this side and a wire on this side, and just some non-conductive material in between the two plates called a dielectric. So let's, for this example, let's just say that's air. Now imagine there's a charge here, Q, conducting along this wire. So it's like traveling along the wire. So that's called conduction current, right? Current is the time derivative. Okay, so there's conduction current here. Now let's say the charge reaches this side of the plate it can't make it to the other side. There's a plate there. But picture, it's like a relay race. So this charge hands the baton to this charge on the other side of the plate. You're like, here you go. Okay, so now this charge has the baton, displaces to the other side, to the other plate. So when that charge goes across, that's called displacement current. Okay, and then that charge hands the baton to a charge on the other side of this plate. And then this charge carries on conducting here, right? So if you like block this with your hand and just imagine it's like a black box, all you see is there's current going here and current going there. But 
in reality, right, things are happening between these plates because there is actually going to be an electric field between these plates. We'll talk about the details in physics class, really. Now, the voltage across here is proportional to displacement current. Somehow, the displacement current is proportional to the time derivative of the voltage. And this constant of proportionality is called the capacitance in farads. And you will typically see values like microfarads, picofarads. Like a one farad electrolytic capacitor would be like the size of my arm. So, right, if you see little ones like that, they'd be more like microfarads. Okay, now compare this to the inductor. The inductor looked like this. Right? So see how voltage is proportional to the time derivative of the current for a capacitor. The current is proportional to the time derivative of the voltage. Now, let's do that same comparison. Let's say you have some voltage that is, say, like, 2 volts. What's the current? If you have a voltage that's constant here, what's the time derivative of a constant? Zero. Now let's say the voltage is like, uh, the voltage is 2t. Right, so here, that's the slope is 2. What's the time derivative? Let's say the capacitance is 1 farad, just so that the example is easier. What's the current? 1 farad times the time derivative of this, 2. So it looks like this. And then let's say the voltage is now 4 volts. Okay, what's the current? 0. 0. Okay, now, just like we're, when we looked at the inductor, super important, the current for this capacitor changed instantaneously, but the voltage did not. In fact, it's impossible for the voltage to change instantaneously. The only way this could be like this is if the current is infinity, right? Because what's the slope of this vertical line? Infinity. You would need infinity current for the voltage to change instantaneously. So remember this forever, right? For an inductor, the current is impossible to change instantaneously. For a capacitor, the voltage is impossible to change instantaneously. Okay, remember that forever. Now, how much energy is stored in the capacitor? Let's start with the power. Power is Vi. So I is C dV dt times another V, like this. Okay, so that's the power. What's the energy? Power is the time derivative of energy. Okay, so then let's just multiply both sides by dt. Okay, and then integrate both sides. When the voltage is zero, the energy is zero. When the voltage is some v, the energy is some w. So what do we have? Oh, this is zero. So what do we have? C, and then integrate v dv, one half v squared. There you go. Right, and then I think of it like this capacitor. Imagine you take a spring and you smash it by some displacement x, and the spring constant is k. How much spring potential energy is that? One half k x squared. Right, one half c v squared. Just to remember the story as like a mnemonic device. Okay, so this is all really important information. Remember all this stuff forever. And now, the next video, let's talk about if you start putting these in series and parallel. So I'll see you on the next video.